Hey there, Bible readers. It's Miss Sarah here, and it is our last week setting the fruit of the Spirit, and it's the 4th of July weekend. So um, I have a last joke for you all. One last joke for the series. Are you ready for it? Okay. Why was the cucumber mad? Because it was in a pickle. Okay. <laughs> I know, kind of lame. But um, so what, what kind of things are you guys doing for the holiday? Do you have like um, fun things that you like to do? I, so, uh, sorry, I, so I just got these new pretzels at the store. They're so good. I, so I bought this for my family, but oh gosh, I can't stop. I can't stop eating them. Like, I'm probably, I'm like most of the way through this bag. I haven't even gotten to share anything with anybody yet, but I just can't stop. But anyway, so for the 4th of July, we like to um, watch fireworks and um, we eat food and stuff like that outside. Oh my gosh, these are so good. Have you tried these before? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna eat this, this whole thing without even sharing with anybody else. Oops. So. Oh, you know what? I, I shouldn't do that, should I? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put these down. I'm sorry, guys. You know what? These are gonna go down here. Um, sorry you had to see all that. It's, they're just really good, and it's hard for me to stop when I start eating them. So, okay, well, anyway. Fourth of July weekend, and our last message on the fruit of the spirit, which we are talking about self-control today. Oh. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't I didn't show self-control there, did I? <laughs> oh man. Okay, well I, I'm so sorry. Uh, friends, you know what? Let's do this. Let's just start over. I'm gonna go put these away so that whatever's left I can share with my family and not take them off for myself. And then let's really talk about self-control. Of the spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. If you wanna be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. You wanna be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. You wanna be a watermelon? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. If you wanna be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. If you wanna be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the spirit's not a grape. You wanna be a grape? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace. Self-control. 
Before our break, you all went lack of self-control when it came to those pretzels. Um, instead of saving some for my family, I did not have control and I was choosing to eat them all myself. And that kind of made my stomach hurt because those are really salty. <laughs> and you probably did not enjoy watching me eat that either. So self-control can sometimes be a hard lesson to learn. Self-control means um, having control over your feelings and actions, especially when it's hard to do. And through this series, we've been looking at the fruit of the spirit and also the, uh, the word in Greek um, as we're learning. So the Greek word for self-control is enkratia. Can you say that? Say it with me, ready? Enkratia. Good, nice job. So, the thing about enkratia or self-control specifically that the Bible talks about, so this is the self-control that the Bible is telling us, is that it only comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's because the Holy Spirit helps us have control over the power of sin in our lives. So instead of self-control, maybe we could call it like, with the help of the Holy Spirit, control. <laughs> So let's read a section from the Bible. Um, got mine right here. Let me grab it. Where we're going to look at an example of perfect self-control. So I'm going to open to Hebrews, which is toward the back of my Bible. It's in the New Testament. Uh, Hebrews 4, 14 through 15. So got it right here. You can see about how far back in the Bible it is. And let's read. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Okay, friends, so who showed perfect self-control in that passage? Jesus, right? So when Jesus lived on earth, he was tempted in every way that we are tempted. Yet, even though he was tempted over and over and over and over again, he did not sin. Whoa, how crazy is that? So I want you to think of um, that thing in your life that is kind of a bigger temptation for you. So we all, we all have them. I have them. I know you have them. Everybody does. Um, so I want you to think about what that is. Maybe um, having a hard time not raising your voice or yelling at brothers, sisters, cousins um, when, you, when you don't get along. Or um, disobeying your grown-ups. Maybe when um, you don't want to do that chore or help with your responsibilities around the house. Uh, think about what that might be. Okay, got something up there? All right, so think about how easy it is to give into temptation. It is so easy to just fall back on that thing that we wanna do even though we know it's not right. So what do we do about that? I mean, how, how do we push back on that temptation? How do I push back on that temptation to keep eating all of those pretzels and not sharing them with my family even though it was for all of us and not just me? How do we do that? How do we say no to sin? Well, let's talk about it after we take a break. <laughs> so let's do some drawing together and then we're gonna come back and see if we can answer that together, okay? Hi friends. So remember earlier in the message when we were asked to think of something that um, is a struggle for us, something that we have a hard time obeying or um, it's easy for us to give into temptation about something we shouldn't do, right? Okay, let's draw that thing to help us remember about the fruit of the spirit, self-control. Let's go.
Okay, here's mine. Now, I want to make sure I say something really important here. So, there is nothing wrong with enjoying food, having a snack. Food was meant, is meant to be eaten and enjoyed, okay? So, I want to make sure that that's clear. My problem was this was something that was bought for everybody and I did not share with everybody, okay? So, that was my struggle. Well, if you finished, awesome. You can always finish later. But for now, let's get back to the message. So friends, before our break, we talked about enkratia, which is the Greek word for self-control. And that means having control over the sinful thoughts and actions um, in our lives, especially when it's hard to do. And when the Bible talks about self-control, um, it's talking about the self-control that we have through the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, Jesus knew what it was like to be tempted. Jesus was tempted over and over and over again, yet he did not sin. You know what? I bet Jesus had siblings or, or cousins or friends that, um, that maybe he sometimes disagreed with or, or didn't get along with um, and wanted to raise his voice to them. Or I bet he had chores that weren't his favorite, <laughs> um, that he was tempted to, to disobey his grown-ups um, and say he's not going to do them, right? But every time, Jesus chose to be loving and obedient, even when it's hard to do. Jesus was even tempted to tell God that he didn't want to die on the cross. Yeah, he asked God if there was another way to fix our broken friendship with him. But instead of fighting it, do you know what Jesus said? He said, Father, your will be done. Can you imagine that? Even in the worst possible circumstances, Jesus had self-control and he knew that dying on the cross would take away the, um, the penalty and power of sin in the lives of those who trust him. So knowing that, let's go back to that question that we asked before the drawing break. How do we say no to sin? How to, do we push back against that temptation to do things that will hurt God and hurt people. Just things that we know are wrong. How do we do that? Well, we put our trust in Jesus. When we put our trust in Jesus, he sends us the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. And the Holy Spirit is God's spirit living in us and he is always with us. We can pray and ask God to have self-control in the areas of our lives that are hard. Think back to that thing that you said was, was a challenge for you, right? We can pray and ask God, help me. <laughs> Please help me say no to sin in this area of my life. When we show self-control, it's not just about us either. It's about being loving to other people and being kind and being good. Do you hear that? Those are also fruit of the Spirit. You see how it's all connected like that? Okay, so I'm going to throw our memory verse up here, and we're going to say it together. Let's all say it out loud as we review and remember um, the fruit of the Spirit. Let's do it. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, let's try this a couple times with our hand motions. Now, I'm gonna let you know, <laughs> I am not as good at this as Miss Colleen, so <laughs> bear with me, uh, but let's see if we can do them together, ready? Okay, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, got through it, got him. Okay, do you get him? Okay, let's do it one more time and maybe we can try to pick up the pace a little bit. Ready? Okay. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How'd you do? Awesome. <laughs> so, friends, remember, self-control, or ankratia, means having control over our feelings, sinful feelings and actions, especially when it's hard to do. And we receive self-control through the power of the Holy Spirit when we put our trust in Jesus. So, let's take a look at our takeaway today. It is, you can have self-control over your sin because God has power over all sin.